this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use Bibme. Bibme is a fully automatic bibliography maker that uses a technology called Autofill, and I think it's one of the easiest ways to build a works cited or reference or bibliography page. So if you're having your students do research, I think it's extremely important that you have them cite their sources, and Bibme is a very simple website to use. You don't really have to get involved in the teaching of the correct citation format. Bibme does that all for you. So here we are at the homepage of Bibme, and the address is bibme.org, B-I-B-M-E dot O-R-G. And you can see that Bibme will cite a variety of sources, everything from books to magazines, newspapers, websites, journals, films, and there are some in the other category that we'll look at in a minute. And what Bibme does is it uses an, a technology called Autofill, so you give it as much information as you know, and it will find the rest. And that's why I like to use Bibme. So let's go ahead and choose, let's start with a website. So we're going to go ahead and click on the website tab. And it's asking us for the website URLs. So that's the address. So I have a website open here. Let's say we're doing a report on how the internet works. Um, I'm going to go ahead and cite how stuff works. So I'm going to go ahead and copy. And I'm going to go back to Bibme. And I'm going to paste that address. And then I'm going to click load info. And what that does is it goes out to the How Stuff Works website and it fills in this information for me. Now one of the annoying features uh, that Bibme has added recently are these pop-up videos that automatically play. So I'm just going to go down and shut that off. So if you hear something and you're not sure where it's coming from, it's probably because that pop-up video is playing. Alright, so now that we have that video turned off, let's take a look at the info that it's given us. You'll notice that you have several lines, and some of these lines have an asterisk in front of them. If the line is asterisk, that means that information is required. You must have that for a citation. You will notice that some lines don't have an asterisk. And when we're working with websites, a lot of times it's hard to find the sponsor and publisher, the version number, the date created. So they make those items optional. But if you have a student who says, well, I don't know what the website URL is, because that's required. If you hover your cursor over the top of it, it's going to pop up with a message that tells you what the URL is, and it also tells you where to find it. So if you're not sure where the sponsor and publisher information would be, hover your cursor over the top of that, and it tells you that the information can usually be found at the bottom of the website in the footer. So we're going to fill in as much information as we can in the website info, including the date accessed. This is the date that you looked at that information. So we'll scroll down and we'll check out the other things. Um, it also has a section for author's name. Now with websites, a lot of times the author is not listed and so they do give you the option of no author. If there is a website listed, Bibme will find it and it will put the author's name down here. All right, so we've got as much information filled in as we can. We're going to go ahead and click Add to my bibliography. And we'll see, shut off that video again, we'll see if we scroll up to the top, right over here, here is that information put into correct citation format. So you don't have to worry about teaching that format, Bibme does that for you. You'll notice that you have a yellow pencil if you want to make a change to that information. If you don't want to cite that source, you can click the red X and that will remove it from your uh, bibliography. You'll notice that you have a choice of format. The two most popular choices are MLA and APA, and those are simply just style guides for um, citing sources. You can start a new bibliography. We're going to go ahead and leave that as an MLA, but you can you could choose one of the other ones that you have listed there. You can start a new bib bibliography, which would delete this information. You can download it to a Word document to edit it, or you can save it to an account. Now, we haven't logged in, but it is very simple, and it's free to register. Um, you can just go back up to the top, and here's your register um, button. Fill in some information. You will need to have a web, uh, an email address in order to register. And by registering, then, you would be able to save your information in Bibme and continue working on it. So what I would do here is I would simply copy um, and paste this information into the Word document or PowerPoint presentation or whatever it is that you're having the students work on. All right, so we've done a website. Let's take a look at how easy it is to do a book. So we'll click on book, and again, we'll come back here and we'll stop this video from playing. And it asks us to, we can find a book either by the title, the author, or the is been. 
um, let's say we're going to s do a book report for Grapes of Wrath. So we'll go ahead and type in the, ad uh, the name of the book, and we'll click Find Book. And it goes and it finds all of the possibilities that we might have um, for books called Grapes of Wrath. And you can see that there are a number with that title. Um, we're going to go ahead and select the uh, 1967 edition, so I'm going to go ahead and select. It will load the information from that edition. It asks us, are you citing the entire book or are you citing just a chapter? So you can choose that. We'll go ahead and cite the entire book. If you are citing a chapter from a book, you'll notice that then you get, uh, then you have to name the chapter and you have to give the page numbers. We'll go ahead and cite the entire book. It again fills in the author information and we'll click Add to my bibliography. And it'll just keep adding to the bibliography that you're creating over here. So that's how easy it is to do a book. Um, now how about a film? That might be another source that you would cite. We'll go down and shut off this video again. A film. Um, Alright, let's cite, uh, maybe we are referring to 12 Angry Men for something. So I'm going to go ahead and type in the title and find a film. And it will go out, again, much like it did with the book, and it will find all the possible choices that you have um, for that particular film. So we'll go ahead and cite the re-release. And here it comes with our information. Are you, again, are you citing the entire film? Are you citing a chapter? Are you citing the commentary? Type of film. This is a motion picture. The medium, so we'll say we watched it on a DVD. And again, anything that's asterisked is required information. Fills in the director information, and we'll click Add to my bibliography. And here we can see that that information has been added to the bibliography. So again, using um, this method, you would then just simply copy and paste to whatever um, Word or PowerPoint uh, document that they're doing. If we look at the other, we can also cite interviews, lectures, radio programs, encyclopedia articles, or photographs. So BibMe gives you a wide variety of sources to work with, and it is a very simple program to use. So share this site with your students and require them to cite their sources when they work on a project.